are definitive characteristics. The 99% versus 1%, 1% versus 99%, this sort of antithetical relationship, at least at this level, at least at this point in the history of the movement, defines the group. So um, the group, however, has definitive characteristics. The position of the stranger is one of intentional rather than binded, mechanized involvement. I'll say that again, right? The position of the stranger, wherever the stranger is located with respect to the group, is one of intentional rather than binded, mechanized involvement. And this comes from uh, three uh, above, right? From, from what Simmel says, which is synthesis of nearness and remoteness, which constitutes the position of the stranger. What do I mean by that? Um, I want to I want to explain how this unfolds. You can imagine that we have. Let's look at a micro level of the stranger, right? This is going to be a micro level, and this would be obviously the macro level. Okay, at the micro level, we have the stranger, the particular stranger, right? Um, Number three, the position of the stranger is one of intentional rather than binded or mechanized involvement. Right? So then we have the group. G R. Yeah. Then we have the group. And you can imagine how this works, right? Just conceptually speaking, I'm trying to keep it real simple, real user friendly. Intro. Um, I remember when I first went, my wife and I went to the, and it's up on the internet, uh, you can watch it. My wife and I went to the first Occupy. My, uh, my first experience at Occupy was at Occupy Fort Lauderdale. I had no idea of what Occupy was. Uh, I was interested in it. I had seen some stuff about it. It was still relatively, it was still relatively, I mean, it's still relatively in its infancy, the movement, but it was, it was pretty new. And uh, so I was like, okay, well, we'll go to Occupy and see what happens. We get there, and there's video of this. There were, there was a gazebo, Homeless people live underneath that, especially in sort of inclement weather, and we had displaced homeless people. And I remember off camera, I was talking to somebody, and I said, now that's ironic, right? The fact that you can displace homeless people, right? You're displacing people who've already been displaced, right? You we're twofold displacing people. And it sort of rubbed me the wrong way. I didn't, I didn't like that initially. This was my first occupation, right? And initially, it was just the pessimism, and I was like, I don't like this, right? Because it's like people are complaining about their things, and they're not thinking about the homeless dudes, and that's just not cool, blah, blah, blah. So my relationship to the group at that point in time was defined by the difference in group activity and my own activity. I would not be the type of person that would willfully, intentionally um, uh, displace homeless people. Right? And I'm not back in the movement, I'm just telling you, sort of recapping my experience and reliving my experience, which is, which is on tape. Right? So I was like, eh, I don't really like that. Right? The fact that I intentionally decided, despite seeing that, to continue to persist in the movement, to continue to persist past sort of surface level appearance, to really get to a deeper understanding and deeper understanding and deeper understanding, and I'm still going deeper and deeper. Every time I do an occupation lecture, every time I attend a new rally or protest, I get a new interpretation of the movement. I get new understanding of the new movement, new depth to the movement. I realize that it is my intent that's driving me towards the group. Right? What's driving me towards the group is the intent. That, that's super, 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 super important, right? It's not this sort of mechanized robotic, I'm going to try and find my position in the Occupy movement because all my friends in high school are doing it. All my colleagues in the university are now participatory action research is the big thing, so let's go over there and do some PAR research and I can, you know, I can be all super cool. No. What's driving me towards the occupation movement, literally and figuratively, you know, when you're driving towards it or conceptually, you're driven towards it for me personally is a deeper level of understanding, right? It's, I will stop being interested in the occupation movement once I feel like I understand the movement. Once I feel like I understand the movement, I'm bowing out, right? I'm, not, I'm no longer interested. It becomes boring, right? 
every time I, I investigate it, however, I'm, I'm finding new things. There's new stories to be told. There's new interpretations. There's a new way of perceiving it. My intent then, that thing which binds me as, as, uh, as, uh, it's almost a tether, right? What tethers me, what, keep, what, what, what connects me to the occupation movement is the promise of more information. And as a scholar, you, you know I'm a crackhead for info. I love learning new stuff, right? So my intent is, my intent is to gain more information from the group. Now we'll go back out macro. My intent is to gain more information to the group, and that attracts me to the group. But I recognize that I have to gauge my interest because if I assimilate, if I want to be too much like the group, I, I'm going to end up becoming a fanatic. So I, there's a respectable distance that I have to keep, right? And this respectable distance for me is what is of most interest and in the intent behind my participation is to gain more and more understanding. Once I gain that understanding, I then interpret it. I try and find references it, reference to that understanding within the canon within the literature, and then I disseminate that information to you. This is the process, right? Field notes, information gathering, cross-reference with the canon, assimilation of that information, presentation. You might not be doing it for that reason. You might have foreclosed on your home, so the government might have taken your, your business, and you're pissed off, and the reason that you are attracted to what's motivating your intent is the fact that part of the occupation movement speaks to your indifference, your anger, your rage, your disgust, your discomfort, right? That's the attachment. But as I've said before, not me specifically, but as Simmel said before, is that there is always this sense in which the proper mode of existence within any one of these social movements, so that it doesn't become fanatical, is uh, a respectable distance, right? Some people will approximate, some people will wholly assimilate, some people will assimilate more than I will, and some people will be completely disinterested in the group. It's up to you to determine your level of comfort and participation within the occupation movement. Okay, should be clear. Sort of still uh, general info. Um, the intentful participant is freed from external obligation to participate. Right? Participation is not forced, it is willful. It's obvious, right? The intentful participant is free from obligation. I am not obligated to participate in occupation. I'm also not obligated not to participate, right? There's no one telling me I shouldn't, well, I mean, for the most part, there's no one telling me I shouldn't participate in the occupation movement. For me, the interest in the occupation movement is a recognition that, just by sheer coincidence or happenstance, I happen to live in a time where a global social revolution is taking place. And if you think that the occupation movement is anything less than a global social revolution, you don't fully understand the power of the movement. So I can't sit as a, a spectator. I have to, as Freer says, I have to uncross my arms and get into the field to try and bring my contribution to the movement. But what's important is that no one is forcing me to participate. I'm participating of my own volition. The stranger thus develops an objective attitude, right? And here's, I want to give you a bit of truth and falsity, right? So when we talk about objectivity, we think of those things, that which is external to the perceiver, that which is external to the subject, that which is quantifiable, verifiable, empirically, ostensibly defined, blah, 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 blah. We all know the difference between objectivity and subjectivity. So the, the title of the section is Mobility and objectivity in the stranger. We now have a better understanding of mobility. This mobility isn't really a mobility of me moving my feet towards the occupation movement as much as it is mobility as defined in terms of intentional drive, right? The intent to, to assimilate with, to varying degrees, with the occupation movement. That mobility is a conceptual, not physical mobility. Though, obviously, I do have to physically drive to the movement or fly to the movement, right? But the desire that's motivating me to approximate, to have an understanding, to ingest conceptually the occupation movement is what Simmel means by mobility, right? The idea of objectivity 
is is defined in a wholly new way um, with respect to this sociological understanding.